In this presentation, I'm going to solve a number of exercises in which I have two or three vectors and ask whether they are linearly dependent or independent. Normally, to make this decision, we would have to solve sets of equations using Gaussian elimination. But in this presentation, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to use cases where we can more or less see, just by looking at the vectors, whether they're dependent or independent. If you can do it at sight, then that's the way to go, of course. First, a reminder. If we have n vectors, they're linearly dependent if c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus and so on, up to the nth vector, can be shown to be zero. That should be a zero vector, of course. For some choices of the constants c, not all to be zero. If the only way that this equation can be made to work is that all the c's are zero, then the vectors are linearly independent. You may recall, though, that there's a slightly different way of looking at linear dependence. Let's choose one of the vectors that has a c that is non-zero. If the c is non-zero, then we are allowed to divide by it. So we could isolate that vector on one side of the equation, and thereby we would be expressing it in terms of the others. Let's suppose, for example, that c3 is not zero. Then we could write the following. The vector v3 has now been expressed in terms of all the other vectors. Notice that it's missing on the right-hand side, of course, and we divide by the coefficient c3. Changing sides of the equations also led to the negative sign. This is another way of viewing linearly, linear dependence, and if we can see that one vector can be written in terms of the others, then we can immediately see the, linearly, the linear dependence. Let's do some examples. The first one is in two dimensions, and I have two vectors, 1, 0 and 1, 3. Is there any way we can combine these to get 0 without having the coefficient 0? Or, to put it another way, could we express v2 in terms of v1? Let's try and do it. So we ask the question, can v2 be a number times v1? Is there such a c? It's clear that this is impossible because v2 has a 3 on the bottom while v1 has a 0. There's no multiple of 0 that we can turn into a 3. So v2 cannot be expressed in terms of v1. Or to put it another way, there is no combination of v1 and v2 that comes to 0. These two vectors are linearly independent. It might be even more obvious if we wrote the vectors in terms of i and j as follows. Clearly v2 cannot be got from v1 because v2 has j's in, while v1 has none. These vectors are obviously linearly independent. With a bit of practice, we should be able to see that immediately at sight. Let's look at another example. Still in two dimensions, but this time with three vectors. In a separate screencast on linear dependence and independence, I've mentioned a situation like this. In general, if we have n plus 1 vectors in n dimensions, they are always necessarily linearly dependent. If the number of vectors is more than the number of dimensions, we have linear dependence always. So we don't really even need to look at these numbers. This is three vectors in two dimensions, so they must be linearly dependent. However, let's see how it works. I think it should be fairly easy to see that v3 contains 1 of v1 and 3 of v2. So we could write the following equation. As we were able to express v3 in terms of v1 and v2, they're linearly dependent. If we preferred, we could write the whole equation with 0 on the right, and then we'd have a combination of v's that comes to 0. Like the following. OK, nothing too difficult so far. We should have been able to see these at sight. Let's look at another example. 1, 4 and 4, 16. Once again, it's almost trivial to see. v2 is just 4 times v1, so they must be linearly dependent. Almost seems too easy, doesn't it? Let's move back into three dimensions. Three vectors in three dimensions. v1 equals 1, 0, 0, 
v2 equals 1, 2, 0 and v3 equals 1, 2, 3. These are linearly independent. Can you see it immediately? We don't have to look in that much detail. Just look at the bottom entry of v3. It's a 3. v1 and v2 have zeros at the bottom. So there's no way that that 3 could be cancelled out by parts of v1 and v2. There's no combination of these vectors that comes to zero. Or to put it another way, v3 could never be expressed as a combination of v1 and v2 because 3 cannot be made up of zeros. We have a linearly independent set here. I'm going to do just two more examples. Three vectors in three dimensions again. v1 equals 1, 0, 1 v2 equals 1, 2, 0 and v3 equals 1, 2, 3. This one is not quite so obvious but we can still think it through without the Gaussian elimination. There are various ways of thinking it through. Let's focus on the twos in the middle for example. If v3 was to be expressed in terms of v1 and v2 the only way v3 can have a 2 in the middle is to have 1 of v2. If we have 1 of v2 then to get the 3 on the bottom of v3 we would need 3 of v1. So to get the 2 and the 3 right in v3 we need v2 plus 3v1. Let's write that down. I've put question marks around it because I'm not sure it's true yet. OK, v2 plus 3v1. Remember we've constructed that in order to get the 2 and the 3 correct in v3. So we now have to check whether the 1 comes out right on top. Perhaps you can see immediately that it doesn't. The top entry in v2 plus 3v1 is 1 plus 3 and that comes to 4. It's not 1. So we haven't been able to construct v3 this way. But then if we can't do it this way there's no other way. Any other way we try to make it will mess up the 2 or the 3 because that's the only way we could get those. This set must therefore be linearly independent. Just one more. I think you'll find this one quite easy. Three vectors in three dimensions again. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 2, 1, 0. I hope it's obvious that v3 is just the sum of v1 and v2. Hence these vectors are linearly dependent. It might be even more obvious if we'd written them in terms of i, j and k. Clearly v1 is just i, v2 is i plus j and v3 is 2i plus j. None of them has any k in. Clearly, again, v3 just needs us to add an i to v2. So it's v2 plus v1. That concludes my discussion of these simple cases. You should now move on and look at more detailed cases where Gaussian elimination is needed.